For the people listening, could you quickly just outline what are those seven zones so we have a broad overview? Yep, absolutely. So level one is the lowest level of energy. And I call this your safety zone because you have built in from your brain, your amygdala, it's stemming from the safety sensory to say you're not safe. Whether it's something's different, it tells you there's a bias going to come up or don't cross the street right now, a car's coming. But it's also going to try to keep you in your home, in your comfort zone, right? This is where your gremlins or your inner critics, whatever you want to call it, are constantly like, don't do it. You're not, don't, blah, blah. like, stay here. That And that's okay. And it's, it's important to say thank you for checking out for me, for being this safety zone for me, but I'm ready to step out into that next level. And that next level um, is the combative zone, right? So that's when you're experiencing conflict. It's This is where we see most people operating in their personal and professional lives. And it can be very powerful. It's a very powerful energy. You can push through things. You can go through stress. But I remind people, how long can you run through quicksand? And where do you see that energy starting to expel itself in your body? You see this with depression. You see this with anxiety. You see this with exhaustion. You see this with cancer. You see this with headaches. Like energy has to go somewhere if you're not releasing it. And if you're constantly in this combative zone, that's what it's going to start to do. It's going to get combative within your body. Um, the next level is the compromise zone. So I used to lead with this energy. I mean, I, the best word to explain is how's work? It's fine. How's family? It's fine. How's it? It's fine. <laughs> like, Guilty like as charged. Just, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like you're coasting because you know how destructive, destructive energy can be and how much it can wear on you or make it sad or be like just ugh, too much. But, but you turn that off. And I always remind people that pain switch is also connected to that gain switch. But you're so fearful of experiencing that pain that you give up on all of that excitement because you're like, at least I know I can get by here. I'm not poking the bear. Like I, I can, I know what I'm getting through. And COVID really brought that out. And organizations, like I was hired as the chief energy officer for Caesars for all of 2021 to shift their energy from surviving to thriving. Because surviving is that level three, that compromise zone of like, just get by. I just watched an emo the other night. So I was like, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> Total Costa Rica yeah. move. <laughs> yes. We like to um, celebrate surviving over here, but for the for the sake of, of conversation, I understand where you're coming from. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like it's a beautiful energy, but it's also an energy where like, where can you thrive more, right? Where can you step out of that and realize where that serves you? Because I told you every single energy le level will serve you in some way, shape, totally. or form, but also other times it won't. And so when you jump into level four, I call this the, um, the service zone because you think about others before yourself and you see coming from hospitality, I see across the board, most people will lead with level four energy because they care so much about their customer, whether it's in human resources, my customer being my employees, the customer, you know, an employee, their customer being at the restaurant or a hotel check-in, they lead with like, how can I service that person? And then you get to the curiosity zone, which is my favorite zone. Um, it's, I find it very playful. You get to ask a lot of questions. It's the first area where judgment and assumptions completely, completely are gone. And you look at everything as an opportunity. No matter what the challenge is, it's like there's something you can gain from that. And there's a message in that to help you grow. Um, and then you get to the creative zone, which is that level six energy. And this is where you go and flow. Chicks and Mahali wrote an entire book on it, right? You know, you time flies by. You're so like collaborative with people. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm, you're just so passionate. It's so exciting. And that's so constructive. That's when you get these hits of that last energy. And I call that the climax zone. Like, yes, you can have an orgasm at work just like you can have at home because it's those aha moments where you're like, I figured it out. Like that's the iPhone. That's the passage. That's the process. Like it's so exciting and you can't live in that zone because you'd be living in the clouds. <laughs> yes. Yeah, as you're exploring these higher levels, you get those genius aha hits and those moments and they're so energizing. They're so rewarding. And that's where I'm helping organizations create those shifts, looking at where you have these hot spots that are primarily operating in fire and reactive to how do we get proactive? How do I first get them into that just survival mode? 
And then I start cultivating that curiosity to get them creative, to get them collaborative, to get these genius hits. But it takes time, right? You know, it takes time for them to recognize where they're at and then create the shift to move forward. Absolutely. Thank you. I know that's a lot, but I really appreciate it. That was really good information. (laughs) I think it's really mind blowing to me, but also so wonderful that uh, and a, a corporation like Caesars would hire like how um, pro, like proactive and forward of them to think of a, a position like this and how important it would be for their team. But you're so right coming on the heels of COVID where people's energy and we're just vibrating a little bit lower. How do you turn things around? Somebody like you is immensely beneficial for business, but also for the individuals. So it's it's a mutual thing here, um, but so cool. What was that like for you being there full time? So it wasn't full time. I was a contractor and I was traveling around their 55 hotel and casinos. Oh, across all the over. US. Wow. Yeah. So I was a speaker. And so they would bring their emerging leaders to a property. So let's say they'd grab like 20 to 30 per property and we'd find one location amongst those. Um, during COVID, during 2021. And I would speak every single month for different locations. And it was so empowering. And you got to see people come alive again. And you see the results. Like, it's not like, oh, that was a feel good moment. No, you immediately see the results. You see the, 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 like the change in turnover immediately, the productivity immediately, got customer service scores shifting immediately. It's something that's so tangible that you can show an organization. This is your, this is where your dollars are hitting. And this is how they've been reallocated because you've shifted the energy. And that's what I also love about it because I always believe in your numbers need to be very data driven. And so people can understand what you're, what you're providing and the impact it creates to an organization and the bottom line. Yeah. Money talks. Yeah. I was going to say CEOs must love you. Must love yes. you. <laughs> CFOs love me. It's yeah, like, okay, CFOs, you yes. cost this much for your speech, but then you're promising me this. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah, take it while you can, buddy. No. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so then let's cut back to energetic impact itself. So Joe Schmo meets you on the street, asks what you do for work. How do you explain it? One sentence, two sentences to somebody who is brand new. Yeah. I say I energize people in their workplace. I you know? love and I it. do that by co- consulting, coaching, speaking, and I have a book coming out in spring 2024 and it's all about energy at work. I have been getting your emails for the last couple of months now and I keep seeing the little teasers of the book. I'm so excited. I'm going to ask you about that, but I want to um, continue my thought because I'll lose it. My ADHD will get me if I don't, if I don't ask you right now, <laughs> but um in the ways that you can work with people when they come to you f- with EI, like, is it just individuals? Could you do something for a company too, like Caesars? How are you, what's your preference and what's maybe more typical? It's a mix. So I love to speak. And what I love about coming into an organization or an association, like I shared, I'm speaking at HFMA this week. So that's the financial industry and healthcare. It's 200 women. It's a women's um, event, which is really exciting. Um, But I love creating an impact that large within an organization or association because it impacts multiple organizations. And then from there, they can bring me in and consult and say, here's where our challenge areas are. Can you help with this? Mm -hmm. And I can share to them, yes, and here's how. And so I'll consult with them. And then from that, we either do individual coaching, group coaching, leadership coaching, executive coaching. It really depends on what they need when I do these assessments and can show them, here is how your organization is operating, or here is how this team that you're having challenges with is operating, and here are who they are connecting with, and this is why this destructive energy is spilling out. And so it's very personalized to the organization, but that's why I like to like, I'm like, bring me in for a speech and we can see who it's resonating with. And then they are very open. It's like this almost psychological safety to say, I feel like we have some destructive energy. Do you mind coming in and checking it out? And I'm like, absolutely. And then we can dive deeper, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. And then so if an individual is not affiliated with a company, they just want to work with you one-on-one, you would typically start with one of those assessments and then do some one-on-one coaching. And how would that, what would that look like? Is it three months? Is it one year? What's yep. the time frame? I start with three months. Um, most of my clients go to six months. I've only ever kept a client the longest nine months. Coaching is to fulfill goals. 
it's not, I'm not a therapist. I'm not here for you just to talk. Like, no, what do you want to accomplish? How can we get you there? And let's move you there quickly and with ease. And you feel really empowered. These are tools to empower people. Like I, I don't need to be there for them forever is to get them going. And then they can constantly use the tools and check in. If there's a sticky situation, you know, my clients will reach out to me here and there, but they know the tools, right? They're empowered to do this. And so most work with me, like I said, three months, six months is the average. Um, they just reach out to me on my website. As soon as they send in, I like go over kind of the process. Um, they always do my values driven solution assessment first. And then my energy leadership assessment um, that I said, IPEC sponsors second, because what I want them to do is have such clarity on what are their motivators. And then we energize those motivators towards their goals and we create action plans and they are accountable for what they want to accomplish and they put timelines around it. It's, it's a simple formula when you think about it, but just like I'm a coach, I need a coach, right? I have a speaking coach. I had a literary agent coach. You know, when I want to accomplish something, I go to the experts to say, how do I get here with the most efficiency and ease? Yeah. Boom. Well, I like that you recognize that too. And that's probably what makes you such an award-winning speaker, ma'am. Because, I mean, clearly this is a common theme for you. The work is never done. You always keep pushing it. You always keep seeing, how can I go a little bit further? How can I keep challenging myself? And clearly you've been able to reap some benefits from that. And you're seeing a lot of success. So kudos to you for that.